Welcome back, uh, friends and folks. We've got the Pentakill Teemo Please versus Falcon Esports game coming up here in just a moment. I am Sharrigan, and once again, I am joined by Torres. Torres, what do you think of that last game? I mean, in one word, it was a stomp. Just stomp. It, it really was, but I mean, Team Spirit did put up a fight. I really like the Tenacious effort. They had some good individual plays, but I mean, in the end, it was INT just winning it all. It really was. INT had full control of that game. In the meantime, though, we've got Pentakill Teemo, please, versus Falcon Esports about to go at it right now. And in this matchup, it's... I, I want to see PTP put up a, a point on the board, 0-3. Uh, they've had some really rough matchups lately. Um, and we are currently resetting our draft because that was the wrong uh, draft coming out. So those were the incorrect bands. It was looking a little familiar. Had some deja vu. So we've got a Vladimir, Nocturne, Thresh coming out on the side of Pentakill and Falcon. Okay, okay. The, these bands are, are leading me to some interesting ideas the, of what these teams want to pull out. We've got that Hecarim immediately locked. Holy, that was that was fast. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's lightning draft. <laughs> I mean, a B1, Hecarim's pretty standard. They picked the Senna Tom Kench, maybe trying to avoid getting dove and keeping the Senna just alive with the Tom Kench. Maybe just... I'm expecting a fasting Senna coming out of from Falcon Esports, mm -hmm. and probably uh, from a Pentakill Teemo, please. They're probably going to pick their ADC and support now that they've shown up. Although three of the supports have been banned out, mainly just engage supports to may really just help them out. Looks like Jinx, a very strong ADC pick, is picked up, and Lulu really was looking for the. I, I expect from this draft that the uh, the draft is really just going to be built around Jinx then. Yeah, uh, that, based off of those two pickups, absolutely, that's how we're going to go with this. And then we've got a Silas as kind of a response uh, to pick up. You know, anytime I see a Silas pickup and a Hecarim on the other team, I'm like, ooh, that, that's not going to be good for the Hecarim team. Yeah, I mean, the Silas pickup is kind of unorthodox, but I mean, she has he has a couple of good ults to steal from, the Hecarim and the Wu uh, ult mainly. And there's still two more picks to go through. But it yep. seems like Falcon Esports knows that the mid lane and the jungle and the mid lane and the top lane still haven't been picked, unless of course that is a Wu top or mid mm -hmm. hasn't been picked up. And it looks like they're starting to ban out the mid pool. We'll see what PTP starts to ban out too, as the bot lane for Falcon Esports has already been picked up, and the supposed mid lane has also been picked up. Yeah, and that's kind of one of those interesting things about Silas is you can flex him uh, in a couple of different directions if you really want to. Uh, one of the things that I like about them picking him up this early is it does force Pentakill Team of Please to think about who they're selecting in terms of ultimates. Like, what are we going to give this Silas as tools uh, for this fight coming up? What can we handle and that sort of thing? Um, with that Lulu ultimate in general, that's just a huge amount of survivability that's going to be available, and it's it's kind of devastating. Yeah, I mean, on the same side, it's I feel like Falcon Esports and PTP are kind of thinking the same thing, that if you're going to have to get to the ADC, it's going to be just a trail of misery, as mm -hmm. they have the Tom Kench for the Falcon Esports and the Lulu for PTP, kind of taking this Bruiser Caster thing on the opposite routes. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just kind of imagining just basically it's like a huge siege battle where you've got these two siege towers just kind of going at it with the ADCs popping off from behind, like just getting their little shots up. We have seen Jinx get kind of crazy, though, in, uh, one of our, in a couple of our previous games uh, where like they just let her get to late game scaling and it was just absolutely devastating. We have that Fiddlesticks coming out on the side of FEC, though. That's that's an interesting pickup. I always like seeing a Fiddlesticks. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting pickup, but is it one of the viable junglers in the packs? Normally, there's like four junglers that people tend to rely on during this patch, and it's just a lot of it's in competitive play. Udi, you're being banned out by PTP, really just lets Falcon Esports pick up Fiddlesticks because the Hecarim's already picked from, from PTP. Probably didn't want the Lily into that either. Yeah, that, that would be, be my guess in that sense there. Um, like, I just personally, it's like I, I like that he has that fear, that extra CC. Uh, and we see an Annie pickup on the side of PTP. We're, we're already starting to kind of see, I'm thinking that's probably an Annie mid, um, more than likely, because I don't think we're going to be seeing a Machine Gun Lulu top, but uh, that's that, that, that's an interesting pickup in my opinion. I'm not entirely sold on it just because I feel like it's allowing too, uh, too much squishiness on the side of PTP, where you've got the Fiddlesticks, the Silas, and the Senna, who are all just going to be able to burst some of those champions down that it could end up being really hard for them to deal with as the game progresses. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of an unorthodox draft coming from PTP. 
But I mean, it could be, it could work depending on if they are dictating these fights correctly. Mm -hmm. Maybe the point of their, I mean, the point of their comp is to protect the Jinx, but in the order they take these fights, and if they take numbered fights in their favor, I feel like they can get a quick kill and just get out. Because Falcon Esports is really just looking for more of a team fight comp. Silas is looking to steal the Hacker Mole, the Annie Ult, one of those ults, maybe even the mm -hmm. Mordekaiser ult to single someone out. While Orin, and while Orin knocks them up and Fiddlesticks kind of finds a flank angle where they're not expecting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I'm I'm totally leaning on the side of FEC in terms of the way this game is shaping up just based on this draft alone because I think it's going to be really easy for them to just pick out that Jinx. Uh, but I think we're, let's go ahead and hop onto the Rift and see how this actually ends up. All right, yeah, so I, mean I don't think we're going to get a spicy five, man. Yeah, I think it's going to be more of a, a five-point start from all these teams. Maybe just getting some early warning, maybe through the junglers, maybe the top lane just sits there and try to play as a point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely going to be the way this plays out. <laughs> you know, Wild West Wild on that Fiddlesticks, every time I see Fiddle, it always creeps me out. I just get chills running down my spine just by the way he moves. It, I swear. Yeah, I mean, when you take it to the old Fiddlesticks, he's kind of like a little dorky, but this Fiddlestick really just strikes fear in people's hearts <laughs> they, I, that 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 hold is the character design was such a fantastic rework on that um and then the fact that he's the pharaoh right there i mean just look get, look at that little ghosty looking thing yeah if you see that in your dreams you're probably gonna watch memory erased just a little bit and you know one of the things i, I think is really interesting about fiddlesticks and that i love about his rework are those uh war totems where he puts like a facsimile of himself and I think that's going to be really advantageous because if Graviel decides to invade on the red, he's going to see that ward. He might initially try and go in on it, which is going to obviously not work. But in the end, Wild West Wild is going to be like, oh, he's at my red. And it's going to just give him that extra vision. Yeah, it looks play like out. Fiddlesticks is doing the, the level two clear. Let's see if he can actually do it correctly without losing the aggro. It's actually fairly difficult to do on this red side. And Like yeah. he did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was only a minor setback. It looks like he's going to get the aggro and be able to do that fast clear but overall still still pretty good as it's yeah. pretty hard to do it on the boost side it, it's a little tricky you got to get those distances just right in order to actually make it work and already on the bot side we've got a guardian proc coming out as beshiwap takes a little bit of damage from the rat autocrat and raw blaster in the top lane against pure llama getting a lot of damage off there too both of these teams i think are going to be skirmishing quite a bit uh just look at that camel basil's also already down a quarter of his health uh, in this matchup, I feel like Raw Blaster is kind of got the advantage against Pure Llama, so. Yeah, I mean, something that, like, when you say skirmishes, I expect a lot of skirmishes to be happening, mm -hmm. but I don't want to see any kills go over from the side of Falcon Esports. Absolutely not. We're already seeing a flash come out from Vanal, though, as he has to dive under tower to stay alive. Yeah, I mean, they got him at a good level of disadvantage. Forces out of Jinx Flash. Remember, we dictate the state of that way, and the way will start bouncing back. But I mean, overall, Falcon Esports is just looking to do some damage and try not to overstep their boundaries. They're really just trying to scale up. And a matter of fact, Senna's trying to get those souls as they're playing Fasting Senna. The Silas and, and they're just going to pick their fight probably around the sec the first or second Drake. Yeah, look at that brittle damage coming out right here as Raw Blaster has to back off because his abilities are on cooldown. But that, that this fight is honestly, it's kind of going to go one way or the other. Like, it's a lot of mis misstep. One misstep is going to cause a kill to fall over on that top lane. Yeah. Something I want to point out early on is that instead, Hecarim has started the uh, his queer a little bit. He's a little bit behind on his queer, is what I want to say. The Fiddlesticks is already doing his Krugs, and despite... He had to skip his Gromp in order to get the Crab. It looks like Fiddlesticks knows that, and he's going to take a smart back and just take a recall and say, hey, cut my losses and take the next Crab down in bot lane. Mm -hmm. but something yeah. that probably should have done, knowing that Fiddlesticks has no threat, and his lanes kind of have prio, except for the Annie, but it's not that much. He can still move. Mm -hmm. Is that the Hecarim should have done his blue buff and the Gromp at the same time. Yeah, just it would have that little thing would have actually helped him out a lot, I agree. Something I want to see from these junglers, though, is I want to see the Fiddlesticks kind of just farm up. And then I want to see the uh, the Hecarim actually apply some pressure onto the mid lane. Because that's really only his, his only gankable lane. It, it really is, and it's kind of funny because I feel like uh, the where Silas is right now... See, he's got Hecarim checking out the, the backside jungle. 
Chop right there, and we might be seeing a gank happen here really soon. Just in the meantime, Rat Autocrat is taking a lot of damage as Haps decides to go under turret. That's gonna be a first blood over to the Jinx, though, as Senna picks up the kill onto Rat Autocrat. Now it's just a bounce back between Beshiwap and Vanal. Look at this. I feel like this is gonna come down to the wire. That's a TP coming in. Flash is necessary. That little auto attack may actually end up being really bad for Pure Llama as they get pulled back in, and Pure Llama picks up the kill. Yeah, I mean, it, little, it was a misplay from Haps, going a little bit too deep. They were winning the lane up until then. Really just wanted to trade out that first kill, maybe. I mean, if they get first blood, it's kind of worth. You could say worth, at least to your teammates, at least. But in the end, it goes over to PTP, and that TP from the Mordekaiser from Pure Lava really just sealed the deal. It did, and I feel like that auto attack onto the uh, soul for Senna just slowed her down enough to where Beshiwap actually ended up not being able to escape from the flash coming out from Mordekaiser. Yeah, and it looks like Pure Llama's wave was just in the right spot, too. It mm -hmm. looks like he only lost, like, three or four minions, and overall gets the kill gold as well. So, I mean, really, really in a great spot. That was a, a yeah, that was a great, uh, great TP coming out from him right there. And then that's Graviel starting down on his Krugs. Uh, probably just going to start yet another... He's going to probably clear that and head over to Drake, is my guess. Yeah, he'll probably... He has no, uh bot camps and they have no pressure really despite getting that kill the uh the bot wave is actually stacked onto the red side of the map so it's not like they they can't actually go to that drake so what i assume hecarim's gonna do is gonna clear its grubs and since he's already taken the back he's just gonna clear up to the top side of the jungle mm, yeah more more than likely I, I was hoping for a little bit of a fight not gonna lie but i guess seeing him go the safe route and get his actual farm is probably a good idea yeah, I mean, of course we live for those skirmishes, but I mean, he uh, <laughs> he thought otherwise. In the meantime, we got a massive wave pushing in on uh, the side of right over here for uh, Beshiwap and Haps. Not... Yeah, I mean, despite giving those kills over, mm -hmm. it, their lane state was in a, and their wave state was in a good spot. I would have liked to see them push in the wave, but because they didn't, the bot lane from Falcon Esports actually... Uh, got stopped, got frozen right in, under their tower, and it's really just, mm -hmm. despite getting that kid, those, that first blood, it's really just... Yep, we got yet blood. another engage happening right here as Haps manages to help uh, pick up a kill for himself, while Beshiwap in the meantime dealing a lot of damage. That was a nice root coming out um, from Senna right there. <clears throat> yeah, we see Graviel just kind of, when he went up from the Krugs and he just went up towards the top side because his bot side camps weren't up, and just kind of trots down through the mid lane, saying hi. But I mean, yep. something that I wanted to see happen from a TTP was actually calling Graviel down to shove in that wave. If they had shoved in that wave, I don't think that 2v2 kill happens on the bot side again, just because PTP had forced themselves to extend themselves in the lane because their wave was messed up. And in order to fix that, they needed to call their jungler down. No, that exactly because of the way that lane was frozen by Falcon, uh, they just there was nothing they could do right there. Pure Llama getting a lot of good damage onto Raw Blast right here, getting that nice pull. Uh, the passive from Mordekaiser coming out as well. And Graviel coming in onto that lane. That was a nice dive in pushback, and Beshiwap is get saved by Haps as he gets eaten, uh, pushed back under tower. That was some really good coordinated play coming out from the side of Falcon. Really good coordinated play. It looks like Fiddlesticks is. We might be seeing a Fiddlesticks dive in here. Hecarim is looking for some invade. They're probably looking to set up Drake, and I think we're just waiting for Wild West to do his dive in out of this bot lane. Yeah, I mean, they didn't spot each other when Hecarim went in to hit that Scryer's Bloom. Fiddlesticks just sitting there like a scarecrow. Oh, nope. <laughs> quite frankly, quite literally. There it is. He comes out, but he's not quite in range in order to get the fear off. But that is a silence, and this is going to be a kill as Wild West Wild takes down Vanal. This could be a lost Drake, though, because they've been sneaking it this whole time. There goes the Drake. That was a, uh, that was a little bit of an interesting play right there. I'm not going to lie. I'm not. I feel like oh, we got it, but it's not over yet. As Camel Basil comes down, steals the Hecarim ult. He's currently trying to make his way around, but that's a good thing for him to have in his back pocket. But I think that's where. Uh, Falcon's gonna go ahead and back off at the moment. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of a, like... Ooh... Yeah, <laughs> they go back. Yeah, right there, Wild West Wild getting polymorphed and then stunned as Tibbers gets dropped on his head. That's gonna be a kill as Gravios takes him down. 
Yeah, it would have been an overstep from Wild West. They just killed the ADC, but at that point, you saw the Wu, you saw the Hecarim. The Annie was close by with her stun and passive active, and that's just a little bit more of a read play than anything. Just a little bit. Uh, I do feel like that was it was a little bit of the, the greedy for the minions. Uh, it almost worked out for him, though. Almost worked out, but in the end, he ends up dying and paying for it. So with the way things are playing out, I, I, I'm kind of like this is about how I was expecting. Uh, Falcon is having a few little missteps. Like I feel, feel like the Fiddlesticks waited a little bit too long to drop his ultimate down. I understand he was waiting for uh, them to get into range so he could hit them. But he, he needed to go in on that a little sooner. Yeah, I think what he was waiting for, he was wondering if the uh, PTP bot lane wasn't actually taking Drake. Because in all, they had no vision. When the Hecarim hit the Scryer's Boom, they didn't ca they didn't see each other. Mm -hmm. And despite the uh, the Annie being missing, that's all they know. They only see the Annie's gone, they see the Hecarim's gone. They can assume the Drake's being taken, or they can assume they're in that banana bush. In the mm -hmm. bot lane, if they were in that banana bush and the fiddle six goes too early, that play is just botched. Yeah, and that's was... true. This is where vision wins games more than anything. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like Falcon Esports is really just playing to their win condition at this point. The center's just stacking up nicely. Even they have even have a CS lead on the Jinx Lulu. Well, we'll see where this kind of goes from there. Yeah, uh, interesting thing to note here is that Beshiwa. <laughs> Okay, we got a fight going on right now. Vanal is taking a lot of damage from the Senna auto attacks. She's like walking just outside of him, it looks like, so they're not quite able to go off. Uh, they are going to push this wave in. That should be an easy plate uh, for the side of Team Falcon. Yeah, probably an easy plate. I mean, bot lane's effectively, well, not necessarily over, but a lot of the pressure is on Falcon Esports' side. They're able to dictate this lane if there's no outside pressure coming through. Yeah, just look at that chip damage. Yeah, but what Fiddlesticks is doing is making his way down bot, but it looks like Hecarim has started making his roams towards the top side. He's He knows that Pure Llama has been pressuring Raw Blaster up in the top side this whole time. And eventually, if he gets low, they can execute somewhat of a dive. But with this top pressure of them being pushed in, Annie and Mordekaiser having pressure, they have started the Herald. Mm -hmm. That is a good call. Uh, we see that uh, Camel Basil was able to reach out and notice that the Rift Herald was getting taken, forces them off of it. Yeah, I mean, at this point in the game, you kind of just have to respect the uh, the level 9 Silas. If he steals that ult, your Fiddlesticks is fairly bursty at this point with the uh, Sorcerer Shoes and the Hextech Alternator. But I mean, both these comps, both of those, that 2v2 can go either way at this point in the game. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see exactly how it all plays out. Right now, we've got... Um... This bot lane, I, I don't think we're going to see a dive. I feel like Haps wants to, and being a Tom Kent, she certainly can. But with Graviel already moving down towards the bot side, that's going to be really nasty for them. So they're probably just going to meet him here on the river. Yeah, see? Poor Graviel's getting caught out. That's a four-man uh, gank because he just gets completely pincered, but he's able to ult his way out with the Lulu ult in addition. That's two ultimates down on the side of PTP. Yeah, we'll see where Falcon Esports kind of tries to extend their weave. They had a nice pincer down. They, there, the communication was definitely there. They had Tom Kench coming up from the bot side, the Silas going down from the mid, and the Silas, and the Fiddlesticks coming in from the jungle to kind of just pincer that Hecarim in. Mm -hmm. Probably got more than what they were hoping for, but we'll see where that lead, where those advantages go to. Uh, there were two ultimates. Maybe they rotate towards the Herald, and maybe even the Drake because it's coming up in the 30-second mark. Looks like they took a timed recall together, which is what I really like to see before this Drake. That is something that we're starting to see a lot more of in this Heroic League, where the all of the champions are timing their backs, trying to get them all done at the same time. Orn does have TP, so we see Lulu Rat trying to clear out this ward. Wild was Wild is coming in. Just It feels like he's trying to stop it a little bit, just kind of scare him off. Yeah, I mean, the Fiddlesticks is giving some respect, and the Lulu is giving some respect. Kind of just a, a gentleman's agreement at this point. It's like, I'm here to kind of scare you. I know you're going to take the ward, but I'm just supposed to do do this because you know how it plays and then we've got yeah so this is going to be we're going to be seeing a nice little fight right around here as i don't know why lulu's backing because the fight around drake is about to start i mean it is a it's a concede all in all it's a concede i would like to see the jinx shoving out the bot lane if they're just going to concede this drake but it looks like the call was a little bit late and oh that then... was a nice steal with ultimate as let's do vanal just takes that drake away from them and in the meantime they've already started the rift herald up top so that's going to be two neutral objectives going over to the side of ptp i mean whatever works man ptp shutting me up 
instead of going for that bot wave, I mean, he could just take the dragon instead. You know, like it, the, yeah, I mean, they just get the effectively get the Drake and the Herald, which is, I mean, kind of a mishap of getting the Drake, but I mean, it works. I, I feel like they should have anticipated that Jinx was waiting in the wings to try and steal that, and I don't know if it was because the smite wasn't up, uh, or if they just didn't, they mistimed it, trying to take it. That, that, that's I, something that I think Falcon should have known was coming. Yeah, I mean, I think they thought they were just safe with it, and they didn't, the Jinx wasn't going to do that, because the Hecarim had, they saw him through the midwave, and they just assumed if there's no smite, I mean, they just let their guard down, and the fact that they just end up sort of giving away a dragon, which, I mean, was a 50-50 chance. Ooh, right here, we might be seeing some spicy as we have. Ooh, that was a nice fear coming out of the side of Gravel as he ran right into Wild West Wild. And that's a Hecarim ult coming out as well. That's going to be a t Pure Llama takes down Raw Blaster while Rob, uh, Gravel Wild West Wild takes down the other one. Camel Basil going in on Pure Llama. He's going to be able to walk away, I think, unless this King Breaker gets out. There it is. The stun, the knockup, lots of damage, the shield coming out, but it's not going to be enough as Camel Basil just chases him down. Yeah, I mean, overall, that play started out very good. I mean, they got the tower. It would have been greedy trying to get the second charge off. But, I mean, it was good map awareness of grabbing able to see where the middle six was mm -hmm. and to cancel that. Despite Ooh. Mordekaiser taking the Ornn into the Death Realm, I mean, it was good. If the uh, if the Silas did not show up, that was a favorable fight. Hecarim would have won his 1v1, and we saw that he Mordekaiser did win his 1v1 over the Ornn. Yep, exactly. And, and that's kind of one of those situations where it's like those... Those Mordekaiser ults are so important to hit and time correctly because if you don't do that, then basically what's going to end up happening, you're going to have a situation where you separated you and an enemy laner, sure, but at the same time, you've also abandoned your team. Yeah, and we'll see if any uh, QSS has come down, but it looks like Gravule is coming down to the bot side with a devastating charge. That is a devastating back. charge. That is a nice eating, though. Gravule knows exactly where Beshwap's going to get dropped. That's a root coming out from him as well, though. We've got a TP coming down at the same time as Silas comes to join this fight. Kingbreaker comes out, but it doesn't actually manage to find his target. Or an ult coming out as well. We have an or a Mordekaiser ult stolen by Silas. He's probably waiting to just take down the Jinx. Exactly. He locks onto that Jinx, goes in on her, takes him down. In the meantime, we've got... Uh, Beshiwap taking down Pure Llama in the back line. That whole fight just kind of degraded and went in the favor of Falcon Esports. Yeah, I mean, PTP started that fight pretty well. They're getting shoved in. They just Their tower had just gotten broken by Falcon Esports. And ultimately decided to go for what they thought was a 3v2 as Graviel pops the ghost. But immediate teleports coming down from Falcon Esports really showed they were on the same page and really just flipped that fight. It, it really did, and I have, we're seeing a lot of coordination coming out from Falcon right now that I think is just throwing the the solo queuishness of PTP into the, the grinder, essentially. Yeah, I mean, as these lane states worsen and worsen as the later the game goes on, they do have two Drakes to fall upon. We'll see if Falcon Esports actually cares about that and they actually play, for, if the game goes long enough to play for Soul Point, or if the gold weeds that they've already created will just keep extending and end up closing the game before it even matters. Exactly. I think this game is actually kind of showing how we've seen PTP pick up pretty much all of the neutral objectives so far, and they've picked up first turret, but it looks like Falcons already well on their way to winning these team fights, winning uh, the next matchups, and taking those turrets down to where the neutral objectives just don't even matter. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what Falcon Esports kind of wants. They are They built a gold weed on a scaling comp. <laughs> yeah, through their macro play, and I mean, they can honestly just sit on this and, ex and just expect to outscale their opponents at this point. As that Jinx is not going to have enough items to just shred through the front line. No, basically at this point, uh, PTP's got to wait until the end game because you're right. Their end, their win condition was the Jinx, and with Jinx falling behind the way that she has, it, she's got 93 to the 120. Uh, the 126 CS, so it, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Look at that Kingbreaker just getting that pull. Senna getting the final uh, kill, the final shot off, taking down uh, poor little rat autocrat over there. And this is going to be a mid turret, not going down as Graviel comes up to say hello. Yeah, and that's really a bad time to go down. A little unfortunate as the Kingbreaker barely reached the woo, but the Drake is spawning right now. And if 
PTP has to either concede and play for the sole point next time, or they just have to... Look at that, Silas using the Hecarim ult to go in on that. That is gonna be an ult coming out from Senna. She just takes out the Jinx. That is a huge knockup from the Orn ult onto the Graviel. Graviel going back in on this, trying to keep the fight going, but the, we got the Fiddlesticks uh, AoE damage that basically negates that engage, and that's a double kill going over to Beshuwap. Yeah, I mean, just really a turn of the hat. They had no vision, and that was a great use of the Hecarim ult from the Silas to go in and just one-shot, effectively one-shot the Vayne. Especially when the Mordekaiser was roaming up for the flank, he kind of just blindly walked in. And a little unlucky, but the Fiddlesticks had good presence of mind, and he just ulted, and Mordekaiser effectively couldn't get his ult off. And even if he did, he was only at 20% HP by the end of that fight. Yeah, no, it's, I feel like the Hecarim ult was uh, too little too late. He, he didn't have the real way to engage that fight. And it was a situation where just that was a beautiful ult coming out from Fiddlesticks. Um, but with that taken down, that's two, almost two turrets on the side of uh, Falcon. So it's, I, I'm wondering what exactly their next objective is probably going to be to go for this Baron. Raw yeah. Blaster tanking a little bit, but not having to worry about it. I mean, the next objective may be Baron, but we'll have to see a fight before, because despite them having such a gold difference, they don't have necessarily the traditional ADC to burst the Baron down, especially with their top laner and their jungle, their mid laner. So it'll be a very slow Baron despite their gold lead. Yeah, and you know, it's like, I know that we were talking, you were talking about it, Beshuwap being the fasting, um, the fasting Senna. It's just, it's such an interest, that, that champ combo is such an interesting thing for me. Like, just seeing all of that uh, gold on Tom Kench rather than the ADC, it just, it always throws me off a little bit. Yeah, what's throwing me off more is actually her build. I have yeah. never seen this build. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a funky one for sure. Uh, but you know, funky cats with their fancy stats tend to actually do pretty well. So apparently it's working. Hey man, I can't question it. She's doing great. Yep. <laughs> hey, yeah, if, 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 if you've got an Iceborne Gauntlet and uh, looks like the, I'm trying to figure out what the second build is. The Cole's almost done, but it's not quite finished. I'm yeah, reading we'll that item right. We'll see what Falcon Esports decides to go for at this point. I mean, Silas has two of them down on the boss side, kind of stalling them. Kind of doing what I to do, start up the Baron, but I mean, they're there standing a whole bunch of vision. But the Baron take is still going to be super slow. Looks like, they, yeah, they, they realized this and they've just called it off. Yeah, it's, it's super slow. I, I don't think they've exactly called it off so much as turned it into a bait. So they're like, look, we're just going to try and take this thing down. It's going to take forever. It's going to give them plenty of time to show up. But in the meantime, Vanel's just going to go ahead and 2v1, taking down this Vanel uh, as Camel Basil just jumps right on top of them. There's nothing they can do. That was a good attempt by Pure Llama to try and save the Jinx with the Death Realm, but isn't quite able to get it. Camel Basil taking a lot of damage in that realm, and he has to actually kind of run away because otherwise he's about to go down. Look at the healing coming out from Camel Basil right there. That is massive. He just like keeps going down to like a barely a tick and then heals himself up. This pure llama just can't seem to do enough damage to take him down, and that's a turnaround as Camel Basil just goes on a rampage. Yeah, on the, the other side of the map, it looks like they're winning the three v the four v three. Looks like Camel Basil just couldn't be taken down. Looks like. The horns just called in, getting clapped. Look at that, and you got the eating haps as he takes down Graviel. Oh my goodness, that's just absolutely insane. And effectively with three members down on PTP, it looks like Falcon Esports is just gonna march it straight to the Baron. Yeah. This is what it, we were it, talking about earlier. Like they need to win a fight first, and I mean Camel Basil taking on a 2v1, setting up the rest of the team for a 4v3, effectively winning, and now they're just grouped up together and now are taking the Baron after that fight. Yeah, and that was the 2v1 versus the ADC and the Mordekaiser. So it's like, that's a situation you don't want to see your uh, ADC losing, especially if it's a Jinx at this point in the game. Yeah, I mean, it's just really bad for Jinx at this point. She's already behind items, and now she has to deal with the Silas who can take Mordekaiser ult. And since she's down an item, she doesn't really have the luxury of building QSS, but at this point in the game, you, you, you will need it. If you yeah. go to later stages of the game, but you just don't have the luxury of building it because you just don't have any gold. Exactly, and they took the uh, the executioners um, in order to try and mitigate some of that healing coming out from Silas. I don't know if that was up during the last fight. Uh, I have a feeling it was, and we're just kind of looking at the, the example of healing is so broken in so many ways. It's almost like if you don't have healing, it sometimes you you're kind of screwed. 
Um, I know it's kind of like old hat to keep talking about this, but it's one of those things that with League, it just keeps cropping up. What are they doing about healing and healing reduction? Yeah, I mean, the thing with the new items is that like, there's supposed to be more viability with the uh, the item builds. And we're seeing a little bit of it, but like some of these, some of these uh, champions are kind of just stuck in old trends. They just build the same items without taking into consideration what should be built at this moment. Like at this point, your Jinx is going to be your carry. Despite her being gold down, I don't think she has the luxury of building the Executioner's Calling. What are the champions that is a little less farther behind? Well, a little less... Has a little bit more gold in their pockets, needs to be building the healing reduction rather than the Jinx. I, I think picking up a Morellos on Mordekaiser would have been a better play, just because you would have been able to get it on multiple targets at once. Um, and instead, wait for like a Runan's Hurricane or something like that on Jinx before building the Executioner's to allow the same opportunity. Um, and look at this. Like, we've got a... This fight around Drake is kind of interesting because you have that huge tank wall, but that is another stolen ultimate as Lord Let's New Vanel just manages to slip that thing in there. Sherrigan, he can't keep getting away with it. What are they doing? Oh my god, they've got up they put the wall. They were I think they th thought the Jinx was on the other side. That's why you had uh raw blaster and hats just kind of sit right there i thought they were just kind of waiting for the hecarim but no i think that was supposed to block the jinx ult and she was like wait i'm just gonna kind of slip around behind and just boop. he's not playing a marksman his subclass must be thief he's stealing these <laughs> drinks away <laughs> oh my goodness that that you you know that's got to be a little bit tilting for falcon like just like oh my god really they're on soul point now how how are they on soul point i mean at this point it's a little bit worrying they are at soul point and it is a strong one it is, but I feel like it's also one of those ones I don't have to worry about too much. Raw Blaster gets taken into the Death Realm. That is a... I, I feel like it's a little bit of a missed time, just because of the fact that's going to put him in a bad position once he comes out. Right there, as we have the rest of FEC jump in. That is Westwild, Westwild coming in on the bottom. Let's do Vanal getting off a lot of damage in the back line. She doesn't have, the rest of FEC doesn't have to worry about it as we get a double kill over to Silas. That is going to be a chase down Hecarim as he gets taken down. And then the poor little Jinx just gets picked up for the last one. And that's a quadra kill over to Silas. And I bet he's screaming, who took my Penta? Yeah, I mean, the king is here, man. <laughs> Silas just chaining him up, sending him to the death realm. He has arrived to claim his birthright. <laughs> He's come to sit on the throne, but that throne is PTP sitting on their corpses, man. It's, but it's, that is so devastating, and this should be an easy pickup, I think. Haps is going to tank a tower shot. He's going to get healed up and shield. Doesn't have to worry about it. That should be both Nexus turrets down here shortly. Yeah, I'll probably be. We'll see if they play it safe. We'll say they're just yeah. gonna go for the end. Though. They're gonna Rob go straight Lassie for the win. The this is an easy finish up for uh, FEC. Haps is gonna be that front line trying to stop it. We, we've got Peshu up in the background, just kind of dealing the rest of the damage. And that is gonna be an easy pickup for FEC, taking down PTP. Yeah, wow. I mean, wow, that was a game. They kept us on our toes despite the score being five to twenty. That did keep us on our toes. That was two teams very evenly matched, and I, I just, I really. I'm a little upset that Silas had his Penta stolen just because of the fact someone would have finally Penta killed Penta kill Teemo, please. But uh, that is not a situation uh, that PTP wanted to be in there. Now, 0 oh and 4, unfortunately, but that was that was a huge back and forth. They were doing so well, but honestly, I think FEC won this in the draft. Yeah, I think FEC won this in the draft. Well, I mean, depending on how they played, I thought it could go either way, depending on their play styles. I thought F I thought PTP was in a good position to win this mm -hmm. at some point with the Hecarim pick and the Any pick. If they effectively used it with the 2v2 in the jungle mid together and make roams after he's snowballing the Any ahead, I felt like Falcon Esports would have been forced to play for the late game scaling, playing from behind. But I mean, in the early game, they kind of just fell behind. It all started with those 2v2 bot kills coming mm -hmm. out from Falcon Esports. Really just well, well played. They had a nice weak side top lane, although he was being shoved in on the Ornn. He was effectively doing his job. He was keeping Mordekaiser pushed up and just not dying to him, which is what you want from the weak side top player. Yeah. And if we look at the uh, the damage charts here, see, the, he, here's my issue with PTP's draft is specifically that Annie and the Lulu. So I understand that the name of the game was keep Jinx alive, but at the same time, keeping Jinx alive doesn't matter if you have a sniper Senna in the background who's just hitting you no matter, like from across the map. And it, not being able to take out Senna or Fiddlesticks just leave, and then you have the damage that's going to come out from Silas later on, just makes me think that looking at PTP's draft, there's no way they were going to be able to win this unless they could somehow get rid of those two players.
Yeah, I mean, this is where I'm going to go back on my point on the 2v2 from mid lane and jungle. Mm -hmm. The PTP had a much stronger 2v2, and if they extended that lead early, this game would have been looked much different. But effectively, Silas and Fiddlesticks had map control for the re after mid game, after that first Drake, and they're able to like move around these vision cones. But if they were to just fight early game where the Fiddlesticks is vulnerable, maybe even invade at like the level three or level four, and this Annie gets a kill on the Fiddlesticks, Fiddlesticks is going to have a very hard time getting back in the game. Yeah, and I guess we'll we might see um, exactly who like we'll have to see like uh, hopefully we get some answers in the interview uh we're gonna probably take a quick break here as well we set that up um i honestly though like i i've got very little else to say about this game unfortunately i just i think fvc had it in the bag and it just kind of played out that way <laughs> yeah i mean good luck to ptp and we're hope to see more of you guys and falcon esports later all right so everyone just stick around we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back All right, folks, welcome back. I am Chris Edgeworth, and I am here with Camel Basil from the Victorious Falcon Esports. How are you feeling? Feeling pretty good. Yeah, that was a, a really awesome win. Um, I was hoping you might be able to talk to us a little bit about uh, your your process and your approach for this game, uh, especially with the draft. You guys pulled out the Fasting Center. What, what was what was going on with this? So Fasting Center, like, it's like strong early, and our ADC likes to likes to get in there and not get one shot so it's kind of like perfect for his play style because it makes him so tanky but he still does like a decent amount of damage and then it has like early game strength because we kind of 
were kind of like weak early, so it was, it was good for that. And it still scales well. Yeah, for sure. And uh, definitely uh, you were beneficent uh, with uh, getting uh, some of the help from all the heels, shields, and uh, swallows from uh, Tom Kench. So I thought it was really awesome. I, I enjoyed seeing it, especially uh, both you and uh, Botlane uh, getting the early uh, CS leads over your opponents. That was really good to see. Um, so going going next, uh, I mean, we saw a multiple different things that indicated a lot of coordination on your team. Things like getting your your back uh, back synced up. Uh, certainly, a lot of your vision play. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what coordination and like a, a calling is in uh, in your team? Oh yeah, so like if it's like a minute or like thirty seconds till drag spawn, we're just like we all try to just back and get like control words to get vision, just control the area. So we can actually like walk in and see what we're see what we're walking into. So you would say that uh, buying pinks equals good. Oh, for, yep, for sure. There Plan you success right there. Uh, let's uh, make sure we get this uh, recorded, folks. Clip it. A mid laner here is actually advocating for buying vision. Uh, let's make sure we get that into the archives. Um, so um, going going on from that, I mean, um, I really liked uh, you understood. Um, a little bit about like, you know, how to play around what they were trying to do in the early game. It was it, they uh, they opted to move on to the herald uh, when you guys were taking uh, one of the dragons, and they left the jinx there. And uh, jinx uh, not one but twice got better if your jungler. What's up with that? Oh, well, the first time we just didn't expect it, and then we called out to block it the second time, but then uh, we just forgot where she was, and she still got it off. On luck, like just a lucky. So, did your jungler grief you, or you griefed the jungler? Uh, it's, it's, I guess I guess we griefed the jungler because there's no way he could have. The smite wouldn't do enough damage in both both cases. Wow, this is this is rare footage of mid laners in the wild. Um, well, uh, certainly want to thank you, Camel Basil, for uh, taking the interview uh, with us. Are there any final thoughts uh, you have before we move into the next game? Uh, ah, uh, not really. They were really strong, so I'm confident we'll just win the next one. There you go. That confidence. Well, uh, folks, uh, don't touch that browser. We'll be right back with uh, Universal Basic Income versus BBZ. So don't touch that browser. <laughs> <laughs> 